Hello students, this is Mr. McAllen, and today we're going to be working on solving or setting up and finding logistic equations based on information given to us. So in class we were talking about how logistic growth equations have a general shape to them and general properties, and I'm just going to review view that real quick. First of all, a logistic equation has two horizontal asymptotes. A logistic equation uh, is basically, um, most people know it as the S-curve from biology where you have exponential growth at first but then because of the size of your um, uh, you know, carrying capacity to the environment uh, the growth cannot be sustained so as a result uh, what happens is that the curve inflects upon itself and it, um, it, it it basically uh, shows how you have limited growth at the end because you're running out of resources. So um, this uh, asymptote at y equals, uh, let's just call that, I'll just call it cc for carrying capacity, um, would be the limit that the system can hold. So sometimes what they give us to figure out a, a logistic equation is they'll tell us what the carrying capacity or limiting amount would be for the environment and that would help us solve some for some constants in this equation. So our um, equation for the logistic growth, I have it written here but I just want to, I'm going to rewrite it. Uh, the C stands for the carrying capacity that's in the numerator and in the denominator is 1 plus um, I, you know, it's an A value multiplied by an exponent, I mean a base of an exponent raised to the power X. So we want to solve for A, B, and C based on our um, initial conditions, our carrying capacity, and one point on the graph. The point they gave us over here, the carrying capacity is 40. So that could be, you know, if it's population, it could be 40 people, it could be 40,000 people, but it's 40. Our initial value at time equals zero, that has a coordinate zero comma 10. And then we have another value for the population at time equals three, we're at uh, 20. So we're gonna use that information um, to solve for the A, B, and C value. So the first easiest value to solve for is the carrying capacity. In fact, we don't even have to solve for it. It's just what the numerator is. So we would put 40 in the numerator. We'd have 1 plus A, B to the X power. In the next um, part of the problem, we're going to plug in our initial value. And when we plug in our initial value, that will be 0, 10. What that does is that makes when we plug things in, we have 10 equals 40 over 1 plus uh, a b to the zeroth power. Now this makes solving for a nice and simple because anything raised to zero power becomes 1, so b the zero equals 1. So then our equation that we're solving for the constant a is just 40 over 1 plus a. a has to equal 3 to satisfy this equation you can cross multiply and solve but um, you know upon inspection you can see that 3 has to be a value to make 40 divided by 1 plus a equal to 10 but let's cross multiply anyway I have 10 times 1 plus a equals 40 instead of multiplying the 10 through I'm going to divide it and now I'll have 1 plus a is equal to 4 or a is equal to 3. So I know my c value is c is equal to 40, a is equal to 10. Now I need to find my b value. How do I find that? I'm going to um, work with the initial condition again of, uh, not initial condition, but the condition at 3 comma 20. So now I'm going to use that point. I have 3 comma 20. So I'm going to write in uh, y equals, this is, uh, remember the c value was 40, at 1 plus, this is now 3, to the bx. So the last thing I have to do is plug in this condition to solve for that other missing constant. So this is going to be 20 for y, because that's what the y coordinate is. I'm going to have 40 over 1 plus, 3 times b to the third power. So now all I need to do is again cross multiply. 20 times 1 plus 
3b to the third equals 40. I'm going to divide out the 20. which will be 2. I'm going to subtract 1 from the 2 and get 1. My b cubed will be 1 third and then that will result in oops, I'll just go on down. b is equal to the cube root of 1 third and it's 0.693 so um, b is going to be 0.693 and so my final equation for this logistic growth curve is going to be 40 over 1 plus 3 times 0.693 to the x power so that would be the logistic growth curve that would help us uh, characterize that uh, those three points in the logistic growth function and um, hope this helped and look forward to hearing your comments.